it seemed like my life was very depressing. Well, not depressing, but at least more challenging than the other people. I felt a bit like an outcast. It was very scary. And having the foundation with connection to other families who may have gone through it, and that that family support, just the, the, just the fact that you could talk about it. Because in the Hmong community, it's like a taboo. The spirit catches you and you fall down and now you're like, oh my gosh, you're cursed and, and you're just a bad omen and we don't wanna be connected or related to you. And so from that cultural perspective, it's even more isolating. It was, and honestly, we hadn't even heard of epilepsy before she had her first seizure, so that was kind of scary and the doctors are like, okay, she has epilepsy, here's a medication, you're on your way home. Um, so that was very challenging and then at first we had to do our own research and then we met a social worker, Diane, through the hospital and she referred us to the Epilepsy Foundation and that's where we got a whole lot more information on what epilepsy is, how to manage it, how to deal with it, how to cope with it and yeah, it was... <laughs> It was a lot, it was very sad, you know, hearing that epilepsy is a lifelong thing and it just spun our whole world. You know, when I reflect on where the foundation has been, it starts in a really beautiful and community-led response by Minnesota doctors and nurses in 1954 in St. Paul who were having patients impacted by epilepsy and seizures and sensed that they needed something more from community. Having the foundation there with resources, with experts, with medical channel, just resources, just to talk, just to start talking to somebody about it, about this journey. What do I need to do as a parent to care for my child? What resources are available? And that is so powerful and important that the, the foundation can be there. With that, you have at least somebody there that you could lean on. I think it's just given me that ability, especially with driving, because there was a point there after I had, back in 2017, I had some breakthrough seizures and I wasn't able to drive. And that's a huge setback. Driving laws restricted adults with driver's license from driving 12 months from their last seizure, 12 months. And the science at the time was saying, you don't need to have that long of a restriction. Six months would be more appropriate. So we changed the laws in the state. And then it said, well, you know what? With more research, we've learned that three months is a more appropriate uh, waiting period between seizures. And so we went back to the state capitol and changed the driving laws to three months. That's a big step. So when I get that confidence back and have that feeling, I feel like I was really thriving again. And then to have a job again, that's just a real independence boost for me. And I knew that there were better days ahead thanks to the Epilepsy Foundation. We definitely go to a lot of the Shining Star events and the Connect groups and Connect events. So we've gone to Nickelodeon Universe and she was able to connect with a few kids there. Yeah, my favorite thing is going on the Bounty House. When I think about the future of this organization, it is building off of our legacy of being in relationship and connected to one another that then frames out a commitment to changing the very community and society we live in for the benefit of people impacted by epilepsy and seizures. The gift of Camp Oz, I cannot talk about enough. It is very difficult as a parent with a kid with epilepsy to, to have a, a place where you know that the kid is not only gonna be safe, but gonna be a place where they can really just be a kid. And Camp Oz was a phenomenal experience every time that we've done it. It becomes this lifelong memory that we refer to over and over again throughout the year and it's contributed to a lot of growth and self-confidence in a way that you just have difficulty accessing in any other situation. It has sort of been like a dream come true. Yeah, it was so much fun. The Epilepsy Foundation of Minnesota 
will be celebrating its 70th anniversary in 2024. And so often I say to folks, join us, help us by becoming an ambassador to the organization. Bring people along with you and say, we want you to come into contact with this mission and this vision and this, this energy that is, is well worth investing in. We're saying join us by volunteering at our events and raising the community education level where folks are seizure smart and leveraging first aid basics to stay safe side and call 911. It's an invitation for us to ask people to be donors. Give us your used clothing or write a check, swipe a credit card, or encourage other people to come to a clothing drive. All of these ways are going to elevate and build communities where no one journeys through epilepsy alone. That's what our past, what our present, what our future is framing up for us. And so in the year 2024, we're inviting everyone to find their place in this big tent of support for the foundation. And I feel like the Epilepsy Foundation has allowed us to really enjoy and thrive in a bunch of different ways that I hadn't anticipated. Um, and I'm so grateful for. It's just, it's, it's meant a lot.